In this episode, we build a board game table. What up, mini family? If you want to play board games from the comfort of your home, you need some kind of surface to play on. A kitchen table, a coffee table, or even the ground are totally sufficient choices. But recently, I decided I wanted something more permanent in my basement, so I set about designing a board game table. One thing I want to get out of the way before we even get into any details regarding the table is that I am not a professional woodworker. The things I do in this video may not be standard procedure and they may even be dangerous. Use this video as an inspiration rather than strict guidelines if you're looking to build your own board game table. I created the first version of this table on graph paper. My friend Trip digitized it and got specific dimensions for all of the lumber. We went to Home Depot and bought all of it. The body of the table is made out of pine, and I'm not quite sure what the legs are made out of. The main tools we used to create this table were a miter saw, a jigsaw, a circular saw, a palm sander, a flush trim saw, and a power drill. We started assembling the shorter 4 foot long sides by adhering the 4 foot board to the legs. After that we attached a 2x4 on top of the legs to act as a lip for the table surface to rest when we installed it. We did this two times for each side. We assembled everything with 2 inch wood screws with the intention of gluing everything up later and using the screws as clamps. When we went to disassemble the beast, it was wedged together so tightly so we just kept it how it was with just screws. The table seems sturdy enough but you can make it stronger by using wood glue and something like dowel joinery alongside the screws. On one of the 4 foot sides, I used a circular saw to cut a slot to accept the sliding platform. After the two 4 foot sides were assembled, we strapped up the other 6 foot long sides to the legs. The legs have a shoulder sawed into them for the 6 foot and 4 foot long boards to rest on. We then attached these 6 foot long boards to the legs in the same way as the 4 foot long sides. After this, we attach the drawer rails in the middle of the table by drilling through these 6 foot long boards into the end grain of the 1x6s. These boards serve a few functions. They give us a place to attach the drawer slides, they give much needed stability to the center of the table, and they are the middle point of where the surface of the table rests. The surface rests on the two 4 foot sides and in the middle along the tops of these boards. While screwing these in place, we fitted the drawers to make sure they fit correctly and slide it easily. Having these two parallel drawers was a major pain in terms of ensuring they were straight in every dimension in order to allow for easy sliding. If I had to redo this table, I would avoid its design and see how I could make them separate. After this, I did some sanding and gap filling. My miter saw doesn't cut perfect 45 degree miters, so the corners came out with gaps in them. So I shimmed up the corners with one ply balsa wood and a combination of resin and sawdust and I sanded for nearly an eternity. Wear a face mask, these airborne particles will mess your throat up. After this I plugged the screw holes with 3 8 inch dowels by gluing the end of the dowel into the hole and cutting it off with a flush trim saw. After this I did even more sanding to ensure that all the dowels were flush with the surface and to remove some of the resin to make sure the surface was all nice and smooth.
After this, I attached another 1x6 to the inside edge of the table to serve as a guiding surface for the sliding platform to rest on. The plan was to have this board support the midsection of the platform as it was sliding out, and then have hinged arms support the bottom. I glued in some wooden blocks to guide the sliding motion of the platform, and I was done. After this, we started staining the legs in the drawers with a nice chocolatey brown. This was a nice contrasting color to the wheat color of the pine. After the steam was dry, I applied two coats of matte polyurethane with sanding in between each coat. After this, my plan was to attach the hinges for the platform support, but the hinges I bought had a lot of slop in them, meaning they couldn't hold a 90 degree angle, and they were also too big to fit into the provided area. Luckily for me, the lip we installed on the end of the sliding platform that acts as a stop block also keeps the platform fairly level with only friction. I'll probably want to change this at some point. Comment below with ideas on how I can fix this. After the steam was dry, I applied two coats of matte polyurethane sanding in between each coat. After that, I upholstered the table in felt, attached it, and we're done! This is my first real serious carpentry project, and finishing it in the space of a week was incredibly difficult. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it works, isn't a complete eyesore, and will hopefully serve my gaming needs for a very long time. If you guys know a mini man or woman who is wanting to build a table, consider sharing this video with him or her. Are there any topics you'd like me to do videos on? They can be more concrete things like painting specific miniatures or less specific things like how to find inspiration. Comment below with your recommendations. Thanks for liking, sharing, and subscribing. But most importantly, don't forget to paint more minis. Hey!